Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. If it wasn't for Andrew's teachings, I would never be where I am today. I would never have victory. I would be living a life of defeat. It was Andrew's teaching that allowed me to develop that faith. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. I'm nearing the end of a series that I've been doing for four weeks on Discover the Keys to Staying Full of God. And I tell you, this is just POWERFUL. I, I DON'T FEEL LIKE I EXPRESS IT QUITE THE WAY THAT I'VE GOT IT ON THE INSIDE OF ME. MOST PEOPLE, THEY, they ARE JUST CRISIS-ORIENTED, AND THEY ONLY SEEK THE LORD WHEN THEY'RE IN A CRISIS, AND THEN WHEN THEY GET OUT OF THE CRISIS, THEY FORGET IT. BUT IF YOU WOULD TAKE THE THINGS THAT I'M TEACHING AND JUST LIVE THIS WAY, IT WOULD STOP YOU FROM HAVING THESE HIGH AND LOWS. YOU WOULD HAVE A CONSISTENT WALK WITH THE LORD. YOU CAN BE AS FULL OF JOY AND PEACE AND FAITH AND ANOINTING AS YOU WANT TO BE. IT'S NOT GOD THAT DETERMINES THAT, IT'S US. AND THIS IS WHAT I'VE BEEN TALKING ABOUT. AND THIS WEEK, THIS IS THE END OF MY TEACHING ON THIS, AND I'M FOCUSING ON WHAT IT SAYS ABOUT HARDNESS OF HEART. AND IT SAYS IN ROMANS CHAPTER 1, VERSE 21, THIS IS THE VERSE THAT I'VE BEEN TEACHING FROM. IT TALKS ABOUT THE PEOPLE WHO WALKED AWAY FROM GOD AND IT SAYS THEY DIDN'T GLORIFY HIM AS THEY SHOULD. THEY WEREN'T THANKFUL. THEIR IMAGINATION WAS VAIN. THEY WERE PRODUCING DEPRESSION AND DISCOURAGEMENT INSTEAD OF HOPE. AND IF YOU DO THOSE THREE THINGS, IT'S A SEQUENTIAL THING. IT'S A CASCADING EFFECT. IT JUST MAKES YOUR HEART HARDEN TOWARDS GOD. THE TERMINOLOGY THAT'S USED IN ROMANS 1:21, IT SAYS THEIR FOOLISH HEART BECAME DARKENED. BUT I'VE USED A NUMBER OF SCRIPTURES. IT'S TALKING ABOUT YOUR HEART BECOMES HARDENED COLD, INSENSITIVE, AND UNFEELING TOWARDS GOD. AND SO I'VE TALKED ABOUT WHAT IS A HARDENED HEART. I'VE GIVEN CHARACTERISTICS OF IT. LET ME SHOW YOU WHAT CAUSES A HARDENED HEART. AND I'M NOT GOING TO FOCUS ON THIS AND EMPHASIZE IT. I WANT TO... THERE'S TWO MAIN THINGS THAT CAUSES YOUR HEART TO BECOME HARDENED. COLD, INSENSITIVE, UNFEELING, AND UNYIELDING TOWARDS GOD. ONE OF THEM IS LISTED IN HEBREWS CHAPTER 3 WHERE IT SAYS, THAT WE HAVE TO EXHORT ONE ANOTHER DAILY WHILE IT IS CALLED TODAY, LEST ANY OF YOU BE HARDENED THROUGH THE DECEITFULNESS OF SIN. SO THAT SCRIPTURE MAKES IT VERY CLEAR THAT SIN HARDENS OUR HEART TOWARDS GOD. GOD'S HOLY SPIRIT WILL WARN YOU AND TELL YOU, DON'T DO THIS. IT'S DESTRUCTIVE TO YOU. IT'S DESTRUCTIVE TO SOMEBODY ELSE. IT DOESN'T GLORIFY ME, THE HOLY SPIRIT IS SAYING THAT. AND HE WILL TELL YOU NOT TO DO IT. AND IF YOU GO AHEAD AND JUST WILLFULLY PERSIST IN SIN. IT'S JUST LIKE A CALLUS ON YOUR HAND. YOU PUT A LAYER OF INSENSITIVITY BETWEEN YOU AND WHATEVER IT IS THAT YOU'RE RUBBING UP AGAINST. YOU KNOW, I USED TO LEAD uh, PRAISE AND WORSHIP IN uh, MY BIBLE STUDIES BACK WHEN I WAS DOING BIBLE STUDIES IN THREE STATES, AND I HAD A 12-STRING GUITAR, AND I WOULD pray, PLAY THE GUITAR uh, SIX NIGHTS OUT OF THE WEEK, AND I MEAN MY FINGERS BECAME SO CALLOUSED FROM PLAYING THAT GUITAR THAT YOU COULDN'T PRICK THEM. THEY TRIED TO TAKE A BLOOD SAMPLE AND IT WOULD BREAK NEEDLES. YOU COULDN'T GET IT OUT OF THOSE FINGERS BECAUSE OF CALLOUSES THAT WERE ON IT. AND IT DIDN'T HAPPEN ALL AT ONCE, BUT WHEN YOU DO THAT, YOU GET A LITTLE LAYER OF ins INSENSITIVITY AND YOU DO IT AGAIN AND IT HAPPENS AGAIN AND EVENTUALLY IT BECOMES JUST HARDENED. WELL, THAT'S THE WAY THAT YOUR HEART IS. AND WHEN YOU VIOLATE WHAT GOD TELLS YOU TO DO, YOU PUT A LITTLE LAYER OF INSENSITIVITY BETWEEN YOU AND GOD. AND THEN THE NEXT TIME YOU SIN, IT MAKES IT ANOTHER LAYER. AND AFTER A WHILE, YOU CAN GET TO WHERE YOU'RE HARDENED AND YOU CAN'T EVEN FEEL THE CONVICTION OF GOD. YOU CAN SIN WITHOUT ANY CONSCIOUSNESS AT ALL. THAT'S NOT A GOOD SITUATION. WHEN GOD REPROVES YOU OF SIN, IT'S NOT BECAUSE HE HATES YOU AND HE'S TRYING TO STOP YOU. IT'S BECAUSE HE LOVES YOU. AND SIN WILL TAKE YOU FURTHER THAN YOU WANT TO GO, KEEP YOU LONGER THAN YOU WANT TO STAY, AND COST YOU MORE THAN YOU WANT TO PAY. YOU DO NOT WANT TO LIVE IN SIN. GOD REPROVES US OF SIN FOR OUR OWN BENEFIT. HE'S THE CREATOR. HE KNOWS WHAT MAKES US WORK. AND it, SIN IS NOT GOING TO HELP YOU. IT'S ULTIMATELY GOING TO HURT YOU. THE WAGES OF SIN IS DEATH. AND SO IF YOU VIOLATE THAT CONSCIENCE AND YOU GO AGAINST IT, YOU CAN EVENTUALLY HARDEN YOUR HEART THROUGH SIN. THAT'S WHAT IT SAYS IN HEBREWS CHAPTER 3. SO THAT IS PRETTY OBVIOUS. I THINK MOST PEOPLE UNDERSTAND THAT. I'M NOT GOING TO FOCUS ON THAT, BUT LET ME JUST SAY THAT IF YOU ARE LIVING IN SIN, IF YOU KNOW 
THAT GOD WANTS YOU TO QUIT DOING SOMETHING AND YET YOU ARE DOING IT, THAT'S JUST CRAZY. DON'T DO IT. QUIT LIVING IN SIN. SIN WILL MAKE YOU INSENSITIVE AND UNRESPONSIVE TO GOD. DON'T DO IT. BUT HERE'S THE MAIN POINT I'M WANTING TO GET ACROSS. IT'S NOT ONLY SIN THAT HARDENS OUR HEART. LOOK AGAIN AT THESE VERSES THAT I WAS USING IN MARK CHAPTER 6 WHERE JESUS' DISCIPLES WERE ON THE SEA OF GALILEE. IT LOOKED LIKE THEY WERE GOING TO DROWN. THE BOAT WAS FULL AND THE WIND WAS CONTRARY TO THEM. AND RIGHT IN THE MIDST OF THEIR CRITICAL SITUATION, JESUS JUST COMES WALKING ON THE WATER AND HE COMES OUT THERE. AND WHEN THEY SAW THIS, THEY WERE AMAZED. AND LOOK AT THIS. IT SAYS IN uh, MARK CHAPTER 6, VERSE 51, HE WENT UP UNTO THEM INTO THE SHIP AND THE WIND CEASED AND THEY WERE SORE AMAZED IN THEMSELVES BEYOND MEASURE AND WONDERED. I'VE ALREADY TALKED ABOUT THAT, THAT IF YOU ARE SHOCKED TO SEE THE SUPERNATURAL, IF YOU WOULD BE, uh, IT WOULD BE NORMAL FOR YOU TO JUST WALK IN THE NATURAL, BUT IF YOU SEE SOMETHING SUPERNATURAL THAT SHOCKS YOU, THAT'S AN INDICATION THAT YOU'VE GOT A HARDENED HEART. RIGHT AFTER IT SAYS THAT THEY WERE SORE AMAZED IN THEMSELVES BEYOND MEASURE AND WONDERED, IT SAYS THEY CONSIDERED NOT THE MIRACLE OF THE LOAVES, FOR THEIR HEART WAS HARDENED. SO LET ME ASK YOU, WHAT DID THEY DO IN BETWEEN THE FEEDING OF THE 5,000 AND MAYBE LESS THAN 12 HOURS LATER WHEN THEY SAW JESUS WALKING ON THE WATER AND THEY WERE SHOCKED, SORE AMAZED IN THEMSELVES BEYOND MEASURE AND WONDERED? WHAT DID THEY DO THAT HARDENED THEIR HEART TOWARDS GOD? THEY CERTAINLY WEREN'T READING, YOU KNOW, PORNOGRAPHIC THINGS. IT'S NOT LIKE THEY WERE DOING SOMETHING EVIL. THEY WEREN'T ROBBING A BANK. THEY WEREN'T COMMITTING ADULTERY. YOU KNOW WHAT HARDENED THEIR HEART? BEING PREOCCUPIED WITH TRYING TO SAVE THEIR LIFE. THEY WERE IN THE MIDST OF A STORM, AND THAT STORM HAD GRABBED THEIR ATTENTION, AND THEY WERE FOCUSED ON STAYING ALIVE. AND MOST OF THESE DISCIPLES WERE FISHERMEN, THAT HAD BEEN RAISED ON THAT LAKE. AND MAN, I'M SURE THEY WERE kept KEEPING THE BOW OF THE BOAT FACING THE WAVES SO THAT THEY WOULDN'T BE BROADSIDED. THEY WERE BAILING WATER. THEY PROBABLY HAD PUT THE SAIL DOWN. THEY WERE ROWING. THEY WERE DOING ALL OF THE THINGS THAT THEY HAD BEEN TAUGHT TO DO. AND IN THEIR PLACE, that, THAT'S GOOD. YOU KNOW, IF SOMEBODY WAS GOING TO TAKE ME ACROSS A LAKE, I WOULD WANT THEM TO HAVE SOME KNOWLEDGE ABOUT SAILING OR ABOUT BEING IN A BOAT. AND IF YOU RAN INTO A PROBLEM, MAN, I'D WANT THEM TO KNOW SOME OF THESE THINGS. YOU KNOW, IF A PERSON uh, TAKES YOU UP IN A PLANE, I ACTUALLY SAW THIS GUY JUST uh, A COUPLE OF WEEKS AGO THAT I FLEW WITH ONE TIME. HE HAD JUST GOTTEN HIS PILOT'S LICENSE, AND HE WAS REALLY GREEN AS A PILOT, AND HE FLEW ME TO MEXICO, AND ON OUR WAY BACK, WE RAN INTO A STORM, AND HE WASN'T INSTRUMENT RATED, SO HE HAD TO STAY BELOW THE CLOUDS, AND I MEAN, THAT THING WAS DROPPING, AND it, ANYWAY, IT'S A LONG STORY. I WON'T GO INTO IT. BUT HE GOT SCARED, AND HE COVERED HIS EYES UP AND SAYS, MY GOD, WE'RE GOING TO DIE. WE'RE GOING TO DIE. AND THIS WAS ONLY A TWO-SEATER PLANE. AND THE PILOT GETS IN A FETAL POSITION. MY GOD, WE'RE GOING TO DIE. AND I'D NEVER FLOWN A PLANE. I HAD TO FLY THAT PLANE FOR ABOUT AN HOUR. AND PRAISE GOD, I LIVED THROUGH IT. WE FINALLY GOT him, HIS COMPOSURE BACK AND BUZZED THE FIELD, GOT RID OF THE COWS AND LANDED IN A PASTURE AND HAD MY WIFE COME GET ME. BUT WHAT I'M SAYING IS, IF I GO UP IN A PLANE, I WANT YOU TO HAVE SOME TRAINING AND SOME KNOWLEDGE. THERE'S NOTHING WRONG WITH KNOWING HOW TO DRIVE A CAR, PILOT A BOAT, PILOT AN AIRPLANE. IF YOU'RE GOING TO DO THOSE THINGS, YOU NEED TO HAVE SOME KNOWLEDGE. BUT WHEN A SITUATION COMES AGAINST YOU THAT LOOKS LIKE YOU AREN'T GOING TO MAKE IT, YOU'VE GOT TO GO BEYOND JUST NATURAL KNOWLEDGE, AND YOU'VE GOT TO BE ABLE TO DRAW ON THE SUPERNATURAL POWER OF GOD. SO I SAY ALL OF THAT TO SAY THAT WHEN, he, when THE SCRIPTURE HERE SAYS THAT THEIR HEART WAS HARDENED, IT WASN'T BECAUSE THEY HAD BEEN IN SIN. IT WAS BECAUSE THEY WERE SO OCCUPIED WITH JUST NATURAL THINGS. WHATEVER YOU FOCUS YOUR ATTENTION ON, MAN, GET THIS. THIS WILL CHANGE YOUR LIFE IF YOU CAN UNDERSTAND WHAT I'M ABOUT TO SAY. WHATEVER YOU FOCUS YOUR ATTENTION ON, YOUR HEART BECOMES SENSITIVE TO THAT. WHATEVER YOU NEGLECT, YOUR HEART BECOMES HARDENED TOWARDS THAT. IT'S JUST THE WAY THAT GOD MADE OUR HEART. AND SO IF ALL YOU ARE IS FOCUSED ON THE NATURAL, 
IF YOUR WHOLE LIFE REVOLVES AROUND JUST NATURAL THINGS, AND AGAIN, THERE IS A PLACE FOR THIS. WE AREN'T ONLY SPIRITUAL. WE HAVE A PHYSICAL, NATURAL PART OF US, AND YOU HAVE TO LEARN HOW TO TAKE CARE OF YOURSELF, TAKE CARE OF YOUR BODY, FEED YOURSELF, CLEAN YOURSELF, BRUSH YOUR TEETH, COMB YOUR HAIR. THERE ARE NATURAL THINGS THAT WE DO, BUT YOU CAN'T EVER LET THESE NATURAL THINGS GET TO WHERE IT CONSUMES YOU COMPLETELY. YOU ARE A SPIRIT BEING, AND YOU HAVE TO GIVE ATTENTION TO THE SPIRIT REALM. AND THE SAD FACT IS THE VAST MAJORITY OF PEOPLE, EVEN THE VAST MAJORITY OF CHRISTIANS, ARE CARNAL. AND CARNAL TO SOME PEOPLE MEANS SINFUL, EVIL, BAD. THE WORD CARNAL JUST LITERALLY MEANS OF YOUR FIVE SENSES. YOU'RE CONSUMED WITH WHAT YOU CAN SEE, TASTE, HEAR, SMELL, AND FEEL. YOU'RE JUST CONSUMED BY IT. AND THE BIBLE SAYS IN ROMANS CHAPTER 8, VERSE 6, THAT TO BE CARNALLY MINDED IS DEATH, BUT TO BE SPIRITUALLY MINDED IS LIFE AND PEACE. AND SOMEBODY SAYS, WELL, I'VE GOT TO THINK ABOUT, YOU KNOW, PHYSICAL, NATURAL THINGS. WELL, YES, IN THEIR PLACE. BUT WHEN YOU GET TO WHERE YOU ARE DOMINATED AND CONSUMED BY JUST CARNAL, PHYSICAL, NATURAL THINGS, IT WILL HARDEN YOUR HEART TOWARDS GOD. IN THIS EXACT INSTANCE, IT SAYS IN VERSE 52, IT SAYS, FOR, AND THE WORD FOR IS A CONJUNCTION, TALKING ABOUT THE PREVIOUS VERSE, WAS TALKING ABOUT THEM BEING SORE, AMAZED, BEYOND MEASURE, AND WONDERED, AND THE WORD FOR LINKS THIS STATEMENT TO THAT, OR YOU COULD SAY, BECAUSE. HERE'S THE REASON THAT THEY WERE SHOCKED AND AMAZED. BECAUSE THEY CONSIDERED NOT THE MIRACLE OF THE LOAVES, FOR THEIR HEART WAS HARDENED. SO LET ME SAY IT TO YOU THIS WAY. IF THESE DISCIPLES HAD FULLY GLORIFIED GOD, GOING BACK TO ROMANS 1:21 THAT YOU HAVE TO GLORIFY GOD, VALUE GOD. THEY HAD JUST SEEN JESUS TAKE A LITTLE TINY BOY'S LUNCH AND BREAK IT AND BLESS IT AND FEED AT LEAST 10 OR 15,000 PEOPLE. THERE WAS 5,000 MEN AND THERE WERE WOMEN AND CHILDREN THERE. SO HE TOOK A LITTLE TINY AMOUNT OF FOOD AND FED THOUSANDS OF PEOPLE AND HAD MORE FOOD LEFT OVER WHEN HE FINISHED THAN HE STARTED WITH. IF THEY WOULD HAVE PUT GLORY ON THAT, IF THEY WOULD HAVE VALUED THAT, IF, YOU KNOW, IF THEY WOULD HAVE BEEN JUST SHOCKED THINKING ABOUT, GOD, WHAT A GREAT MIRACLE. LOOK WHO THIS IS, THE ONE THAT WE ARE, HIS DISCIPLES. IF THEY WOULD HAVE REALLY BEEN THINKING ABOUT THAT AND REMEMBERING, THANKING GOD FOR GETTING TO BE A DISCIPLE OF JESUS AND THANKING GOD FOR GETTING TO SEE THIS MIRACLE, IF THAT'S WHAT THEY WOULD HAVE BEEN FOCUSED ON, THEN THEIR IMAGINATION WOULD HAVE PRODUCED HOPE INSTEAD OF FEAR THAT THEY WERE GOING TO DIE BECAUSE THE LORD TOLD THEM RIGHT HERE IN THIS CONTEXT. HE SAYS, GET INTO A BOAT AND GO TO THE OTHER SIDE. HE DIDN'T TELL THEM TO GET INTO THE BOAT AND DROWN HALFWAY ACROSS. THEY HAD A WORD FROM GOD, AND IF THEY WOULD HAVE TRULY GLORIFIED GOD, IF THEY WOULD HAVE BEEN THANKFUL AND REMEMBERING WHAT HAD HAPPENED, THEIR IMAGINATION WOULD HAVE PRODUCED HOPE INSTEAD OF FEAR, AND THEY WOULD HAVE KNOWN THAT SOMEHOW THEY WERE GOING TO THE OTHER SIDE BECAUSE THEY HAD A WORD FROM THE CREATOR, AND INSTEAD OF BEING SHOCKED WHEN THEY SAW JESUS, THEY WOULD HAVE EXPECTED IT. IT SAYS RIGHT HERE IN MARK CHAPTER 6 AND VERSE 45, IT SAYS, STRAIGHTWAY HE CONSTRAINED HIS DISCIPLES TO GET INTO THE SHIP. THE WORD CONSTRAINED MEANS THAT HE HAD TO COMPEL THEM. THAT MEANS THAT THERE WAS SOME RESISTANCE ON THEIR PART. AND THE SCRIPTURE DOESN'T SAY WHAT THAT RESISTANCE WAS, BUT MOST OF THESE DISCIPLES, PETER AND ANDREW, JAMES AND JOHN, OTHERS, HAD BEEN FISHERMEN ON THE SEA OF GALILEE. THEY HAD GROWN UP THERE, AND THEY JUST RECOGNIZED THAT A STORM WAS BREWING, AND THIS WAS NOT THE TIME TO GET OUT ON THE LAKE, AND SO THEY RESISTED IT. THEY EXPRESSED THEIR HESITANCY TO GET INTO THE BOAT, AND THE LORD HAD TO COMPEL THEM, CONSTRAIN THEM TO GET INTO THE BOAT AND GO TO THE OTHER SIDE. SO THESE DISCIPLES WERE THERE NOT BECAUSE THEY DID THIS ON THEIR OWN. THIS WASN'T A FLESH FLASH WHERE THEY JUST DECIDED TO DO SOMETHING AND THEY WERE ON THEIR OWN AND OUTSIDE OF THE PROTECTION OF THE LORD. NO, THEY WERE THERE BECAUSE THEY WERE OBEYING THE LORD, SO JESUS WAS RESPONSIBLE FOR THEM. THEY HAD ALREADY VOICED THEIR OPPOSITION, BUT THEY DID IT IN OBEDIENCE TO JESUS. AND TO THEIR CREDIT, WHEN THEY HAD THE WIND AGAINST THEM, INSTEAD OF TURNING THE BOAT AROUND, PUTTING UP THE SAIL AND HEADING BACK TO THE SAFETY OF THE SHORE, 12 HOURS LATER, THEY WERE STILL POINTED TOWARDS THE OTHER SIDE. THEY WERE TRYING TO ACCOMPLISH WHAT GOD WANTED THEM TO DO. THEY DIDN'T JUST TAKE THE EASY WAY OUT. SO THEY WERE THERE AT THE COMMAND OF THE LORD. INSTEAD OF BEING SHOCKED AND SURPRISED TO SEE JESUS WALKING ON THE WATER, THEY SHOULD HAVE EXPECTED IT. 
ANYBODY WHO CAN FEED 10 OR 15,000 PEOPLE WITH A LITTLE TINY BOY'S LUNCH COULD ALSO WALK ON THE WATER. SEE, IT'S EXACTLY WHAT ROMANS 121 IS TALKING ABOUT. IF YOU REALLY GLORIFY GOD, VALUE WHAT HE DOES, THINK ON WHAT HE'S DONE THROUGH THANKSGIVING, IT CAUSES YOU TO IMAGINE POSITIVE THINGS. IF THEY WOULD HAVE BEEN FOCUSED ON THE MAGNITUDE OF THE MIRACLE OF FEEDING THE 5,000, THEY WOULDN'T HAVE BEEN SHOCKED TO SEE JESUS WALK ON THE WATER. THEY WOULD HAVE EXPECTED IT. AND THEY WOULD HAVE THOUGHT, WELL, YOU KNOW, THIS IS THE SAME GUY THAT FED ALL OF THESE PEOPLE. CERTAINLY HE COULD DO THIS. BUT SEE, THEY HADN'T REALLY GRABBED THE SIGNIFICANCE OF THIS MIRACLE. AND YOU KNOW, JESUS, WE'RE TALKING ABOUT that BEING A HARDENED HEART. HAVING A HARDENED HEART IS WHEN YOU RELATE TO THE NATURAL MORE THAN YOU DO THE SUPERNATURAL. I BELIEVE THAT WHEN JESUS BROKE THAT BREAD AND BROKE THESE LITTLE FISH AND THEN PASSED THEM OUT AND FED ALL OF THE PEOPLE, I BELIEVE HE WAS BLESSED BY IT. I DON'T THINK HE WAS EMOTIONLESS, BUT I CAN GUARANTEE YOU HE WASN'T SURPRISED. HE WASN'T SORE AMAZED IN HIMSELF AND WONDERING THE WAY THAT THESE DISCIPLES WERE. HE DIDN'T BREAK THE BREAD AND ALL OF A SUDDEN IT MULTIPLIED AND HE GOES, WOW, IT WORKED! AND HE BEGINS TO START GETTING EXCITED. NO, HE FULLY EXPECTED IT. I DON'T BELIEVE IT SHOCKED HIM. HE WASN'T SURPRISED. HE WASN'T SORE AMAZED IN HIMSELF. THE REASON THESE DISCIPLES WERE THAT WAY WAS BECAUSE THEY HADN'T KEPT THEIR MIND STAYED ON GOD. THEY HAD GOT BACK INTO THE NATURAL AND THE NATURAL WAS DOMINATING THEM. AND WHEN YOU ARE JUST 100% FOCUSED ON THE NATURAL, IT MAKES YOU HARDENED, INSENSITIVE TOWARDS THE SUPERNATURAL. MAN, THAT IS A MOUTHFUL. I DON'T KNOW IF YOU SEE THE IMPORTANCE OF WHAT I'M SAYING, BUT THIS IS, THIS IS REALLY DESCRIBING WHAT THE PROBLEM IS WITH MOST PEOPLE. MOST CHRISTIANS, BELIEVE THAT GOD CAN DO ANYTHING. AND IN A PINCH, THEY WILL PRAY AND ASK GOD TO HEAL THEM, TO PROSPER THEM, DELIVER THEM, GIVE THEM JOY, WHATEVER. THEY, they ASK FOR IT, BUT THEY REALLY DON'T EXPECT IT BECAUSE THEY JUST ARE SO FOCUSED ON THEIR PROBLEM. THEY'RE SO CAPTIVATED. THEIR MIND IS SO DOMINATED BY THEIR NEGATIVE CIRCUMSTANCES THAT THEY CAN'T SEE BEYOND IT. THAT'S WHAT THE BIBLE CALLS A HARDENED HEART. AND I TELL YOU, IT JUST DESTROYS YOU. SO HOW DO YOU DEAL WITH THIS? WELL, YOU'VE GOT TO UNDERSTAND WHAT CAUSED IT, FIRST OF ALL. AND THIS IS SAYING THAT, LIKE HEBREWS CHAPTER 3 SAYS, SIN WILL HARDEN YOUR HEART. IF YOU'RE IN SIN, QUIT IT, BECAUSE THAT'LL HARDEN YOUR HEART. BUT THAT'S NOT THE ONLY THING. THERE ARE SOME CHRISTIANS THAT ARE LIVING A VERY HOLY LIFE. YOU ARE AS STRAIGHT AS A GUN BARREL, BUT YOU'RE TWICE AS EMPTY. YOU DON'T HAVE ANY POWER WORKING IN YOU. YOU MAY BE LIVING A HOLY LIFE, BUT THAT DOESN'T GUARANTEE THAT YOU WILL HAVE A SENSITIVE HEART. YOU'VE ALSO GOT TO KEEP YOUR FOCUS UPON GOD. AND AGAIN, GOING BACK TO ROMANS 121, THIS IS WHAT THESE STEPS THAT I'M TALKING ABOUT DO. IF YOU GLORIFY GOD AND PUT VALUE ON HIM AND VALUE WHAT HE'S DONE, AND YOU MAKE IT THE MOST IMPORTANT THING IN YOUR LIFE. THAT WILL CAUSE YOU TO BE THANKFUL AND YOU WILL JUST CONSTANTLY PRAISE GOD AND THAT THANKSGIVING WILL KEEP YOUR MIND STAYED UPON GOD. AND IF YOU DO THAT, WELL, THEN YOUR IMAGINATION JUST AUTOMATICALLY BEGINS TO START PRODUCING HOPE INSTEAD OF PRODUCING DESPAIR. AND WHEN YOU DO THAT, YOUR HEART WILL AUTOMATICALLY BECOME SENSITIVE TO GOD. YOU'LL BE ABLE TO HEAR GOD, FEEL GOD, FOLLOW GOD, AND LET GOD FLOW THROUGH YOU. BUT YOU CAN REVERSE THIS PROCESS. AND IF YOU QUIT GLORIFYING GOD, IF YOU AREN'T THANKFUL AND YOU'RE FOCUSED ON THE PROBLEM INSTEAD OF THE ANSWER, YOUR HEART WILL, YOUR IMAGINATION WILL BECOME VAIN AND IT'LL START WORKING AGAINST YOU AND YOU'LL OPERATE IN FEAR AND YOU'LL JUST BE TORMENTED DAY AND NIGHT THINKING ABOUT ALL THE BAD THINGS THAT COULD HAPPEN AND THAT WILL CAUSE YOU TO BECOME INSENSITIVE TOWARDS GOD AND IT'LL SEPARATE YOU FROM GOD FLOWING THROUGH YOU. MAN, THIS IS REALLY IMPORTANT WHAT I'M SAYING. AND MOST PEOPLE HAVE NEVER SAT DOWN AND JUST THOUGHT THIS THROUGH. AND SO BECAUSE OF IT, THEY JUST, they, WE BECOME OVERWHELMED WITH THE CARES OF THIS LIFE AND THE DECEITFULNESS OF RICHES AND THE LUST OF OTHER THINGS THAT JUST DOMINATE US AND IT MAKES US INSENSITIVE TOWARDS THE LORD. LET ME TURN ALL OF THIS AROUND AND SAY IT THIS WAY, THAT IF THE LORD HAS EVER TOUCHED YOU AND IF HE'S EVER REVEALED HIMSELF TO YOU AND YOU'VE EVER FELT THE LOVE OF GOD OR THE JOY OF THE LORD OR 
YOU'VE HAD A PURPOSE FOR YOUR LIFE AND YOU FELT LIKE GOD WAS DIRECTING YOU, IF THOSE THINGS WERE EVER REAL AND PRESENT IN YOUR LIFE, AND YET TODAY THEY AREN'T, IT'S BECAUSE YOU HAVE GONE, uh, YOU'VE DONE WHAT ROMANS 121 IS SAYING, AND YOU KNOW HOW YOU GET BACK TO WHERE YOU'RE GOING? You, YOU REVERSE THE PROCESS. YOU JUST GO BACK AND YOU START REMEMBERING GOD AND YOU START THINKING OF ALL OF THE THINGS. YOU START PUTTING VALUE ON THE LORD. SAY, FATHER, FORGIVE ME FOR VALUING MY JOB, VALUING MY ENTERTAINMENT, VALUING MY SPORTS, VALUING WHATEVER IT IS MORE THAN I HAVE YOU. AND I GO BACK AND YOU ARE THE MOST IMPORTANT THING IN MY LIFE. AND THEN YOU START GOING BACK AND REMEMBERING GOD'S FAITHFULNESS TO YOU. YOU KNOW, ONE OF MY FAVORITE SONGS IS THE ONE THAT STARTS, I LOVE YOU, LORD, FOR YOUR MERCY NEVER CEASES. AND THEN IT SAYS, YOUR GOODNESS IS RUNNING AFTER ME. LORD, ALL MY LIFE YOU HAVE BEEN FAITHFUL. MAN, YOU GO BACK AND START REMEMBERING THE FAITHFULNESS OF GOD AND HOW HE SAVED YOUR BACON AND PULLED YOU OUT WHEN YOU DESERVED TO BE DESTROYED. AND YET GOD'S MERCY... SEE, YOU, you START GLORIFYING HIM AND PUTTING HIM AS THE MOST IMPORTANT THING IN YOUR LIFE. YOU GO BACK AND REMEMBER HIS FAITHFULNESS. THAT WILL CAUSE YOUR IMAGINATION TO START PRODUCING HOPE INSTEAD OF FEAR, AND IT WILL MAKE YOUR HEART SENSITIVE TO GOD. AND SO IF YOU'VE HAD AN EXPERIENCE WITH THE LORD AND YET IT DOESN'T SEEM REAL TODAY, GO BACK AND DO THESE THINGS THAT I'M DISCUSSING. AND YOU DO THAT, AND I GUARANTEE YOU, YOU CAN REFRESH YOURSELF. YOU KNOW, JUST LIKE A COMPUTER, SOMETIMES YOU HAVE TO REFRESH A PAGE AND IT JUST STOPS ALL OF THE STUFF THAT'S GOING ON AND PUTS YOU RIGHT BACK TO WHERE YOU WERE. YOU CAN GO BACK AND TOTALLY RECAPTURE THE JOY, THE PEACE, THE LOVE OF GOD IF YOU'LL DO THOSE FOUR THINGS THAT WE'RE TALKING ABOUT. PUT JESUS AS THE MOST IMPORTANT THING IN YOUR LIFE. VALUE HIM MORE THAN ANYTHING ELSE. GO BACK AND REMEMBER HIS FAITHFULNESS. ALL MY LIFE YOU HAVE BEEN FAITHFUL. AND YOU START THANKING HIM AND REMEMBERING THE THINGS THAT GOD HAS DONE, YOUR IMAGINATION WILL START WORKING IN A POSITIVE WAY. HOPE WILL RISE UP AND IT WILL PLOT YOU A COURSE OUT OF WHATEVER SITUATION YOU FIND YOURSELF IN AND YOUR HEART WILL BECOME SENSITIVE. YOU'LL START HEARING THE VOICE OF GOD. GOD WILL START SPEAKING TO YOU. YOU'LL HEAR A VOICE BEHIND YOU SAYING, THIS IS THE WAY, WALK THOU IN IT. AND GOD WILL JUST SHOW YOU WHAT TO DO. AND I GUARANTEE YOU, THERE IS NO SITUATION THAT ANY PERSON WATCHING THIS PROGRAM FINDS THEMSELF IN THAT GOD CAN'T PLOT YOU A COURSE OUT OF THAT INTO HIS PERFECT WILL. IF YOU USE ONE OF THESE LITTLE GPS THINGS AND IF YOU TAKE A WRONG TURN, IT JUST PLOTS YOU A NEW COURSE. IT DOESN'T MATTER HOW FAR OFF COURSE YOU GET. IT'LL JUST SAY, YOU KNOW, TAKE A RIDE HERE, AND IT'LL PLOT YOU A COURSE FROM WHERE YOU ARE RIGHT BACK TO WHERE YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO BE. GOD IS AT LEAST AS GOOD AS A GPS SYSTEM. GOD CAN PLOT A COURSE. I DON'T CARE HOW MUCH YOU'VE MESSED YOUR LIFE UP. GOD CAN GET YOU RIGHT BACK ON TRACK. YOU KNOW, WE'VE GOT A NUMBER ON THE SCREEN. IT'S OUR 24-HOUR-A-DAY HELP LINE, OUR PRAYER LINE. IT'S OPEN 24-7, AND PEOPLE COULD PRAY WITH YOU. AND IF GOD'S TOUCHED YOU TODAY, PLEASE CALL AND GET SOMEONE TO PRAY WITH YOU. AND WHEN YOU CALL, ASK FOR THIS TEACHING ON DISCOVER THE KEYS TO STAYING FULL OF GOD. WE HAVE IT IN BOOKS, STUDY GUIDES, CD'S, AND DVD'S. AND THEN THIS WEEK, I'M OFFERING A SPECIAL OFFER OF MY TEACHING ON HARDNESS OF HEART. ALL OF THESE OFFERS WILL BE OVER ON FRIDAY OF THIS WEEK, JUST A COUPLE OF DAYS. SO PLEASE CALL, PLEASE REQUEST THE MATERIALS AND PRAYER, AND JOIN ME AGAIN FOR TOMORROW'S GOSPEL TRUTH BROADCAST. LEARN THE ESSENTIALS TO HAVING A STRONG RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD WHEN YOU GET ANDREW'S TEACHING, DISCOVER THE KEYS TO STAYING FULL OF GOD. Today, Andrew is offering his book as a gift to you absolutely free. This offer is limited to one free book per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive this free offer. Andrew's entire series, Discover the Keys to Staying Full of God, is available in a book, study guide, or as a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. Andrew is offering these products as part of the Discover the Keys package. This package includes the book, study guide, and your choice of either a CD or DVD album. 
The Discover the Keys package has a catalog value of $80, but it can be yours today for only $60. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. Today, Andrew is offering his book, Hardness of Heart, as a special offer. In Hardness of Heart, Andrew Womack teaches that the condition of our heart is determined by what we focus our attention on. The cure for a hardened heart is a total commitment to keep our minds stayed on the Lord. Learn the relationship between faith and unbelief when you get Andrew's book titled Hardness of Heart. Contact us today to receive this valuable resource. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. I've got some great news to share with you, and that is that we have now expanded our phone center hours to 24-7. Anytime you want to call us, we're going to be open to receive your calls. We've been expanding gradually, and this is a goal that I've been shooting at, and I'm excited because, you know, sometimes problems, needs don't just wait until business hours to happen. You may need to call in the middle of the night, and we can now serve you 24-7 on our Andrew Womack Ministries helpline. You say, in the name of Jesus, I'm not going by what I see. I go by what the Word of God says. There's more than just this physical realm. There's also a spiritual realm. I don't care what this looks like. I know what God's Word says. The doctors told me it would be a year before I would walk normal. I was being killed by a cancerous tumor. I was told my wife would not leave the hospital alive. My name is Teresa Hotelling, and I'm from Woodland Park, Colorado. I was told that I would never recover from Sjogren's syndrome, lupus, or thyroid disease. For years, I had tried everything, medical treatments, holistic treatments, even lots of prayer, speaking, and commanding, but nothing seemed to work. That's when I enrolled into Karis Bible College, and my focus shifted off of my symptoms and onto the finished work of Jesus. In just a matter of months, I received my complete healing after sitting under the Word at Karis Bible College. And today, several years later, I am still walking in that complete healing, and I am not alone. I was walking normal within a matter of weeks, and today I am in full-time ministry. Today I am cancer-free, and I'm living life to the fullest. My wife's miraculous recovery shocked all the doctors. Because people like you partnered with Andrew Womack Ministries, we have all been given our lives back. We cannot thank you enough for your generosity, but there are still millions of people out there who need the same truth that set us free. Won't you please help us get that message to them? Please be a partner with this ministry today. Become a partner today. <laughs> You know, you may not know these people, but I know every one of these people that you just saw them give a testimony. And I tell you, Jesus changed their life because of our partners. If you've not yet joined with us and become a partner, I ask you to pray about it and join with us today. I'm pleased to announce that we now have my television program translated into Spanish. We have a lot of my materials available in Spanish, but let your friends know that we're now broadcasting our daily program in Spanish.